So in this video, we'll be investigating what happens with simple harmonic motion when we talk about energy. So I put this one here down, right? <laughs> so let's go back to the basics here. We're going to consider ourselves a mass with springs on a frictionless surface. We're going to assume it's you know, going back and forth, undergoing simple harmonic motion. All right, well, what happens then is right here, we're going to say that at this point right here, well, we'll say x equals zero. Your displacement from equilibrium is zero. Here, however, we're going to call it, uh, well, We'll actually call it x0, which is actually its maximum value. So at this point, now keep in mind it's symmetric. It also does the same thing on the left. Let's look now at what more interesting things can happen here. So if x equals 0, if the displacement is 0, how about potential energy? This is the stored spring energy. But does it make sense if it's at equilibrium, there should be 0 stored energy? Whereas here, the potential energy, if the displacement is at a maximum, does it make sense then that your EP is max? That's your potential energy. And if we look at this one right here, then let's look at the speed here, or sorry, the velocity. So we'll look at that as well. So as this thing goes back and forth and back and forth, let's maybe look at this extreme right here when it's going on this side and it stops. Well, that means V must be zero. And if that's the case, do you notice when it's right in the middle here, it should be actually at a maximum speed or maximum velocity? By the way, over here it's symmetric, same thing over here. If that's the case, then how about kinetic energy? Well, since kinetic energy contains a half mv squared, if this is a maximum value, that means ek must be at a max. And since kinetic energy contains a velocity term here, if velocity is zero, ek is zero. Why is this useful? Because now we can use this to get ourselves an e uh, a graph of how the energy works with respect to displacement from equilibrium. So let's look at this and maybe I'll do in blue, maybe I'll do the uh, kinetic energy. So in blue, let's see, at uh, x equals zero, so when x is exactly zero here, this will be at a maximum. All right, and at, when x equals some maximum value, so something over here, then it's gonna be at zero. So it's gonna be something symmetric, it'll be something like this. Now I'm not perfect at drawing these, but I hope you'll, you'll get what I mean here. It's like a nice shape like this, nice curve. Very nice parabola. So there we go. It should look like this. E K. Uh, now keep in mind this thing doesn't go forever. This thing's actually bound, right? Because X actually stops at some point. That's the maximum it can be. So this isn't a graph that goes on forever. It actually stops on the left, stops on the right. Well, let's do the same sort of idea here, except uh, now we'll do it for um, uh, potential energy. So at x equals zero, potential energy is zero. Okay, that's here. And at maximum, it's up here and it's up here. So in other words, it goes like see if I can draw it right, something like that. And this would be EP. Does that make sense? And then, then uh, what's interesting about it is, well, what about total energy? Total energy is just the sum of these things right here. So this here would be ET, the total energy, which would be equal to just the potential plus the kinetic at any given point. So that means we can just add them like this and just say EP plus EK, and that's it. So this is how we can actually do this and figure out at any given point, we kind of have this, this graph I think is going to be really helpful for us. So if we want an equation for the potential energy, luckily our data booklet has that, it goes like this, EP equals one half times the mass times omega squared times x squared. This is something again, don't have to memorize, here it is, you just look it up. So again, let's just remind ourselves what everything means here. Uh, potential energy must be in joules. Mass is in kilograms. We've got omega, which is angular frequency, which is in radians per second. We've got displacement from equilibrium, which is m uh, in meters. And we've got x0, the maximum displacement, otherwise known as the amplitude, is also in meters. Now, I didn't, I don't have it here, but I'm going to be just sort of defining them here because everything else then as we do is going to be fine as well. Watch, let me show you the next one because we're going to be using these. So what about kinetic energy? Now we have this old equation here for velocity, and remember kinetic energy is just half mv squared. So all I got to do then is just combine this and this. So even though you're not given it, you can still figure it out. It goes like this, so it goes ek equals, well it's going to be one half times m, that's just this part, v squared. Well that means it's going to be omega squared, do you notice that one there will be squared, and this square root undoes the square, so that means it just becomes x0 squared minus x squared. Remember x0 is your a maximum amplitude, oh, sorry, maximum displacement, 
which is otherwise known as amplitude. This is your displacement at any point. So this one right here, you don't get, but you should be able to get it yourself by just combining EK and V. All right, well now, also not on there, but it might be nice to know, is the maximum kinetic energy. Now, luckily, we can see that here on this graph like we were just looking at before. If we looked at this one right here, the kinetic energy is at a maximum, notice, when x equals 0. So I'm going to write that down. So ek max when x equals 0. What does that mean? That means I take this equation, I just make x equal to 0. You see what I mean? So I just had my ek was just equal to 1 half m omega squared is x0 squared minus x squared. And this one right here then just disappears. You see that? So that means then I'm going to call it now. We have an equation we can say ek, but I'm going to call it max. So ek max is just going to be equal to this. So it's going to be 1 half times m omega squared times, uh, maybe I don't need the brackets, x0 squared. So you notice that the maximum kinetic energy is related to the overall kinetic energy. It's just that at max you have x equals zero. Okay. Well, what about then uh, if we want the total energy? That's an interesting one right here. So this one luckily is on your data booklet. But just to show you, we can actually have a clever way to figure it out. Uh, because we have total is just potential plus kinetic anywhere. But at ek max right here, do you notice here? That gives you the total energy at that point EP is zero. If that's the case, that means that the energy total is just equal to the maximum kinetic energy. So in other words, I could just sort of cheat and get to it by just get to my equation right here, half m omega squared x zero squared. That actually turns out it's going to be my total energy. E t equals one half m omega squared x zero squared. There we go, put them all together. Now, you didn't have to necessarily know how to get here. I think it's just nice to see where it came from. But uh, there we go, we have this. This is the total energy in case you need it. So that means if you're solving questions with total energy, or if you've got only potential, you can figure out the kinetic. But remember, these two are not on your data booklet, so it helps to be able to get to them yourself. But remember, uh, EP, that you can find in your data booklet, and the ET you can also find in your data booklet. Hooray!